This is the President of the United States calling. And I wanted to ask, how is the fraud going? Hello? Do you have a, do you have a voter fraud um, claim to make, sir? Well, of course I do. It's the most ultimate fraud ever. I set up this hotline in order to stop it, and I'm calling personally to find out how much fraud has been reported. A lot, a lot has. Thank you, and you're doing a lot of patriotic work. And may I ask you, do you know what the current fraud count is in Pennsylvania? Pretty high, sir. Thank you very much. You know, in the days ahead, we are going to be facing a great tumult from across this nation. Democrats, crooked liberals are all going to be working against me to try to take apart the great victories that we've had in the last four years. But with your help and the help of everyone else, I'm hoping that we will be victorious over these lies. Thank you. And, excuse me, what's your name? What's your name, darling? Uh, I can't tell you my name. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, well, this is... uh, Well, that's fine. I understand the need for secrecy. And I appreciate your hard work, and I know Melania does too, and Don Jr. and all of them. I've been calling the hotline all day. Everyone says to me, don't call the hotline. Stop calling the hotline. You're clogging it up. Other people can't call in, you know? You're really good at doing this voice. (laughs) I know because I'm the president of the United States of America. It's actually impressive. Of course it is. I'm incredibly (laughs) impressive, and we will win. I don't care if we win in November, December, January. I don't care when we win, but we're winning. And Sleepy Joe better go back under that tree and fall asleep for another 70 years, and then he'll wake up and he'll go, what happened? Where is everybody? <laughs> and, definitely will. You know what? I appreciate your sense of humor, and I hope you'll take this opportunity to just think about what you're doing. Maybe you're getting paid, and I appreciate that in a pandemic. you got to get paid to do a job. But just consider that maybe, maybe, just possibly, I might be an incredibly big grifter who's fooling all of you into believing that I actually care about the country. Or anything beyond my own personal interest. Just think about it. Just consider the idea that maybe I'm full of it. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And God bless the United States of America. God bless you. Yes. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. Will you call them again? Surprise, surprise. This is the President of the United States of America calling. Hey, the President of the United States on the line. Yeah. Hey, Trump, that is great. I'm going to pass you off to my supervisor. Please do. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is the Director of the War Room. How can I help you? This is the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, and I'm calling to check in on the fraud. Okay, so this does not sound like the president, but I do not want to jump to conclusions here. Uh, Can you confirm your date of birth? My date of birth is June 14th, 1945. And I'm offended that you don't think it's me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh uh-huh. First off, there are how many hundreds of thousands of votes that we need to count? We need to make sure they're counted properly and legally. And you guys are wasting time asking people their birthdays? You should be saying... Mr. Pre- Listen, Mr. President, you have to understand that there has been a lot of prank phone calls today, and we needed to make sure with you before you, we told you any inside information. But we have gotten an enormous amount of voter fraud, and we are doing our best to give you the ammunition you need to fight this. I promise you, we're going to take this to the very end. We've, we've we need to do it. We need to do it. What's your name again? We, we need to do we it. Do. And we need My to go... Steven. D- Stephen, we need to go all the way to the end, and I promise Mr. you, I will be Mr. doing daily. Uh, excuse me, I'll be doing daily press conferences from between a crematorium and a porn shop. 
I, I expect nothing less from you, Mr. President. That's exactly right. What I love is that you're the people who are supposed to represent me. <laughs> and you don't even take me seriously. And that's good. Mm-hmm. That's what I like. Listen, I Mr. like President. that even my own supporters think I'm a joke. <laughs> Mr. President, look, yeah. we are here for you. We are fighting Thank for you. you. We're going to be here until the very That's end. right. Get all that right. money to pay off my campaign debts. Make sure you keep Absolutely. raising that money because I'm, I'm in a lot of debt. I'm in a lot of debt. I mean, you yeah. have no idea. You know, I mean, that, that, that's separate debt. That's personal debt. And, you know, we know how successful your businesses are, and you'll have no issue paying those things off. Oh, of course. I mean, I paid $750 yeah. in taxes for two yeah. years in a row. I mean, I'm very successful. I'm one of the great. I mean, you know how successful yeah. I am? Six bankruptcies. Nobody's done that. And I mean, I, I, I believe Apple declared bankruptcy about 20 years ago. They did 20 and years Amazon ago? Actually, one a- time? Amazon. Yeah. Amazon actually didn't pay taxes for decades. And right, right. One of the largest companies am I am I a so corporation or am I a human be- being? I mean, you you are the head of a corporation. I am. I mean, that's know. right. But my yeah. personal tax it doesn't matter though, right? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. You, I, mean, so, I so should man, pay less taxes right. than you, right? I have I b- mean, my this, supposed know, billions it, of it, dollars, it, right? As long as it, Mr. Sure. President, as long Excuse as it me. Was legal, that's my name. No it, that's right? my name. That's you know, my name. So so the votes you. Decades, and he, Joe you know, Biden he was a senator. Tax code to, yeah, he was, and he allowed this yeah. tax code to exist for decades. He did. He so allowed he it to exist. Off. That's the way the Senate works. Yeah. One senator, yeah. Uh, yeah. they allow it to work. And if that senator had only said, "Stop the taxes, stop it, pay the fair taxes," if only he'd done it, folks. But Sleepy well, Joe mean, was listen, asleep. You know, I agree with President, you. President Obama had a supermajority. When he was president for the first two That's years. That's right. He so super. Any, anything he wanted. He well, had I mean, such a super, super he had such a super, senators, excuse 60, me, excuse me, senators. excuse me. He had such a super majority. He had such an incredible that he wanted to go out onto the balcony of the White House and rip open his shirt and there'd be a Superman shirt underneath. And everyone would go, okay. whoa, what a super guy. And so then I, I mean, wanted we, to do it when I left the hospital the after I. Well, after I was sneezing on all those Secret Service people, you know, I was like, hey, guys, let's all get COVID. It's like herpes when I got that. I mean, they're, they're young. They're strong. They would have been fine. That's what I said to all the women I gave herpes to also. Now, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a line. It is a line and it's a line in the sand. And let me tell you, yeah. it feels like sand in your shorts when those things flare up. But here's the point. I, I wouldn't know. That sounds uncomfortable. Well, I do know. It feels like terrible, terrible. I have sores. And the point is, I'm not a sore loser, though. But I'm not losing. We're winning. And we've won by so we much. Are. We've won. If you take all the votes for the Democrats and leave those out, I won by 100%. It's incredible. Listen, Mr. President, I, I'm here with you. I'm, like, I, I know. We are, fight, we are fighting to get the legitimate Vote the legitimate on votes. record, and we both That's know right. that it is a hundred percent to zero. All right. Exactly. This is perfect. This is this is the Trump fraud hotline. This is just amazing. It's really amazing. So nobody takes this seriously. Me, you, nobody does. It's all just one big joke. <laughs> It's that's what's amazing about it. Nobody takes it seriously. And this is the beauty of it. We could just keep doing this. Right. We don't need I don't have to be president because now then I could charge tickets to my rallies. Think of the money I could make. It'd be incredible money. Exactly. You know, to 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 tell you a little bit about what we've done over the last few days, Mr. President. What have you done? What lies have you made up? Tell me. I want to know all the ones so I know which ones to repeat. Oh, let's go. It's just us. You can say whatever you want. Mr. President, please stop interrupting me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Excuse me. And now you can go because now I said you could talk. Over the last few days, we've received hundreds of reports of voter fraud each day. There are people saying that there are literally hundreds. There are people saying that their dead relatives have voted. They have evidence of that. Maybe they're ghosts. Yeah. Have you ever seen Possibly. Bill Cosby's or ghost dad? Democrat, well, what right? if it's Bill Cosby's there, ghost there are dad? Saying that, that individuals have offered them money to change their vote at the ballot. Why not? The ballot box. There are sure. They were intimidated. Well, what's wrong with that? Intimidated when they went to vote. There's a lot wrong with that. Physically, physically intimidated by who? The militia guys vote. with rifles? They're on our the side. The stand so. back and stand by. Lock and load. Let's kill that governor. I don't think that's what anyone said. I don't oh, I don't think you have to say it to I don't think you have to say it to imply it. You know, 
the thing is, I love the idea that my people, what we do is we both imply things and then go, we didn't say it. We didn't exactly say it. And then I, I went in to vote. Ooh, and the poll watcher, the 88 year old woman working the polls, she intimidated me to vote for Sleepy Joe. And just being pedantic, Mr. President, there, there are many, many individuals. Uh, do not accuse me of being a Satanist. I don't wear a pedantic. There are many people who have said they've been physically threatened when they went to vote. When, when give me an example. Clearly. Give me an example so I can use it in my yeah, stump speech. I can't give you an example. These are you know, people who are calling it anonymously. That are, that are worried so about how, how do you violate their anonymity by telling me a story that's not attached to their name? You can't even make up uh, one on I the mean, spot? No, no, I'm, I'm, Here, I'm going to give you one. I'll give you one I think is very believable. Guy goes in, he wanted to vote for Trump, and a young liberal, let's say like some leftist, you know, some Ilan Omar, but like a guy version of Ilan Omar, so tough. And they go, I'm sorry, you're going to vote for Trump? I don't think so, pal. And then they take him into the corner of the gymnasium, and they hold him by their lapel, and they go, you know what you're going to vote for? You're going to vote for the guy who dances like a big old queen to YMCA. And they go, who's that? And I go, it's your grandmother, President Trump. And they go, whoa, wait a minute. I think you're right. I'm intimidated, but you've told me the truth. And then he goes in and it's another vote for me. As you know, as much of a joke as it may seem to you in this moment, we actually do have many examples of legitimate voter fraud that have been being reported. Well, I just that. told you one. That was a great legitimate one. That was not legitimate. That was something you just made up, Mr. President. Okay, let me give me another shot, Steve. Let me pitch okay. you another one, okay? Okay. All right. Let's say middle-aged woman, middle-aged white woman. Okay, she can vote for Trump, right? That's the demo, fifty-five percent. She walks in, she parks the minivan, she goes, kids, I know it's hot in here, but I'm going to leave the windows up. I'll be back from voting in an hour. She leaves the kids in the car. Her name, her name is, her name is Denise Delaria. Denise Delaria. That's a good name, right? Sounds sexy, but it still sounds like a mom. And of course. And so then. She goes in to the votes and she doesn't even wear a Trump pin. Okay. And then you see it. There it is. AOC is working the polls. She's not supposed to be there. She's not even from Pennsylvania. But there she is working the polls in Erie. Of course, AOC. She's like, she's like Krishna. She's everywhere at the same time. And do you know the story of Krishna? And well, Krishna was a God who was able to appear in multiple places at the same time. But listen, that's someone told me that story. And I said, I love it. And he's blue. But the point is, is. AOC, AOC goes, she shows up at the Erie. And, you know, I can't stand Erie. I said it in the speech. I said, screw Erie. I don't want to be here. But I went anyway. And AOC is sitting there and she goes, hey, soccer mom. I don't like your look. And I got to get to a Twitch stream later today to play my video game. So you better hurry up. I filled the ballot out for you. Don't look at it. Boom. Another vote for Joe Biden. Total voter fraud right there. Yeah. yeah. Total yeah. voter fraud. You guys got a lot. Steve, this is incredible. I can't believe how much time you've dedicated to talking to me. Yeah. I mean, I can't hang up on the president. Of course. Like, you know, yeah, I'll bark at you. Don't on. come in here and bark at me like a junkyard dog. Oh, and that was it. They hung up on me. That was pretty good, huh? <laughs> Let's want to call again. <laughs> Trump War Room, how can I help you? This is Bill Barr calling. I wanted to check in on the corruption. <laughs> Trump Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Hi. Yeah, I live at a uh, thirty-six, thirty-seven Lakefront Drive, Erie, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, uh, name's uh, uh, William Keller. I want to report voter fraud. Uh, okay. Where did you see, sir? Oh, uh, I went in. Um, went on Tuesday morning, and I had a, uh-huh. I had my Trump hat on, you know. Uh, and they asked me to take it off, you know? So, uh, yeah. So they asked me to take it off. 
So I put my pocket. I went in to vote. Uh, first thing is they tell me my name is on a voter roll. So, uh, you know, I produce my ID. And then they, uh, you know, they found it. Wow. So then I get a, uh, then I get a, uh, go to the ballot. So I go, uh, I go into the booth there. Well, uh, the ballot's all, I couldn't use the pen on the Trump. It didn't work. So I. Wow. So I put it on the pen and I put it in there that it didn't work. So uh, I started filling other things in and it did work on all the other bubbles. So I don't know what they put a lacquer on there or they put a uh, they put a something on there for the pen. You know, not to. Wow. Yeah. So uh, yeah, oh yeah, and uh, so then I took the uh, you know I had to fill it out. Well, so then, you know, I, I, I go to the poll worker. I say, hey, this isn't filling out right, you know. Right. And uh, so they give me another one. I think, I figure, okay, uh, fill this one out. Same thing happens on the trumpets. Smudges off, you know. Wow. So uh, I. Terrible. Yeah. So I ended up voting for, I ended up voting for Joe Biden. Uh, I had to fill it out. Uh, well, you know, I didn't want to vote that way. So, uh, uh, you know, I thought that would be the fraud, you know. Yeah. Now I heard if I get a, I heard if I call, uh, I heard I, I call in. You get a you get some sort of sticker or something? No, sir, unfortunately you don't. How about uh Thank you for your call though? Well, can I ask you a question? Do you think that the crematorium next to the four seasons landscaping gives discounts? I don't know, sir. I'm thinking of uh burning myself alive after this phone call. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, I figure what's the point? I couldn't vote for Trump. What's the point of living anymore? I'm going to go to the pork shop, walk right by that landscaping place, and then burn myself alive in the crematorium. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Can I say something? Have a nice day. Wait, hold on. I want to say, I bet you guys have been the recipients of some of the best comedy in the United States today. <laughs> you guys are getting a front oh. row seat to every person who's funny. You should be so grateful you're getting free comedy. This is better than Trump being elected, eh? Yep, getting quite a lot of phone calls. Yeah. Well, you're getting paid, though, right? Let me know when you're Can't answer that. Yeah, that's why. That means you are. So who cares? You might. You probably voted for Biden for all we know. <laughs> Didn't do that. Well, you should think about it. Go back and fill one of those ballots out. Commit a little voter fraud yourself. <laughs> Everyone commit it. Tell Steve Have your a nice Sunday, wait. Tell Steve his supervisor Trump's going to call back in about five minutes. He should pick up. All right, great. Thank I'll you. Get on that. All right, thanks a lot, eh? Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I can't believe I can't believe that they just keep taking these phone calls. This is amazing. Trump National War Room. Hello. I'd like to report. Hello, what state are you calling from? I'm calling from Pennsylvania. All right. Do you have an incident you would like to report? Yes. In Erie, Pennsylvania, I went to go vote. Okay. Now I am recently uh, a citizen of the United States. I got my citizenship in 2017. So I went to <clears throat> I went to go vote. Now I live at 4140 David Road, Erie, Pennsylvania. Just so you can check the voter registration. And I went to go vote. Excuse me. Carry on. Yes, carry on indeed. And uh, I went to go vote. 
Now, I went to go vote for Joe Biden uh, initially, and then I changed my mind at the polling station. I said to myself, well, oh, did you hang up on me? Hello? I'm still here. Oh, my goodness. So I went to go vote, and then I said, no, that's the wrong timeline. So I said, oh, I have to vote for Donald Trump. Now, you don't understand, but in the future, it will matter how this election plays out. I can't completely inform you as to what's going well, on. This is a good story, but uh, I'm afraid I have to let you go. Oh, don't let me go. I was going to give you a whole Star Trek story. <laughs> National War Room, can I help you? Hi, I'd like to report some voter fraud. Okay. So, uh, what, what, uh, there are a couple ways to do that. Okay. Uh, you could do it on, on the phone with me now, or you could uh, write up the information on a form that's available online. Which would you prefer? Well, I prefer to do it online with you. Okay. All right. So, uh, what was the what was the problem that you noticed? Uh, well, first off, I live in a, I live at three thirty three Elliott Ave in Grand Haven, Michigan. So you can check that against the voter roll. Three thirty three Elliott Elliott Ave. Yeah, three thirty three Elliott Ave, Grand Haven, Michigan. That's a four nine four one seven. Hold on, I can't write that fast. Grand. That's fine. Haven, Grand Haven. Grand Haven, H A V E N, Michigan. Uh -huh. And that's Michigan. 49417. It's more of a summer house. I, I spend most of my time in New York, but. 49417. 49417. Yeah, it's just it's a little place I keep for myself. My, my okay. a friend of mine, there. Jeffrey. Yeah, and that's where. Yeah. There. Yeah, my friend. Okay. Yeah, my friend Jeffrey and I, we, we, we go on, you know, fishing trips, things like that. Ordering oh, nice. pizza things, could you know. I have, could I have yeah. your first and last name? Well, my first name is William. Okay. And my last name is Clinton. Now, now, don't confuse it with the president. <laughs> a lot of people say I sound like him. You know, it's it's a uh -huh. it's a big problem for me, and it's funny too because my wife she gets on me just the way Hillary did, you know. Uh-huh. That's very very unfortunate. Yeah, very unfortunate for me. And and what's your cell phone number or your phone number? Well my phone number? Sure. Uh huh. It's uh it's uh six two one four 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 eight one two four. I mean, so when they used to, huh? Sorry. So, um, what, what, okay. So, uh, what is your email address? My email address. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a long, it's a long one. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Pizza. P I Z. I couldn't hear that. Pizza, like pizza, like pizza pie. Oh, pizza. Pizza, P I Z Z A. Okay. Uh huh. Pizza. Slice, S L I C E. I run a pizza joint. Pizza slice, slice. pizza slice, forever, uh -huh. forever. But the four is a four, like a number, uh -huh. and then E V A, uh -huh. like ever, like you know uh -huh. the slang, you know, ever, forever. Right. Right. Uh, at hotmail. Dot edu. No, actually, it's dot edu. Hotmail.edu. Yeah, there was a brief period where I was a professor, and Hotmail offered educational uh, email accounts, uh, and, uh, and so I, I got one of those. I was, okay. a, I was a professor of crushing it. You know what uh -huh. I mean. You know what I mean. Out on the island with okay. Jeffrey. Jeffrey and Donald, all of us out on the island, and Giseline, we were all out there. Uh-huh. Fishing, That's yeah, but I ran this pizza okay. shop, and uh, and you know, I mean, when we weren't, you know, we'd drink a lot of the adenine from the, you know, from the kids' spines, but uh, it's not working for okay. me like I used to, you know. 
not get yeah, me that. That's, it's not get me. That's a shame. It that's, is. So what? For, so what fraud would you like to report? Oh, this is good. I got to tell you something. In the improv community, we call this yes and, and you are really doing it. It's incredible. I love it. Let's keep going. So now, mm-hmm. the fraud right. I want. Well, uh, no, wait, wait. Thanks no, 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 no. Let me. It's funny. It's funny. Let me get it out, and then and then you can hang up on me. So I want to report voter fraud from us from four years ago. Okay. You realize I've had to sit around Goodbye. with Hillary every day. <laughs> Yes, hi. I'd like to report voter fraud. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, so, um, my name is Rachel. Now, don't be surprised, Maddow. I uh, wanted to report some voter fraud in Massachusetts, where I still cast my vote. I um, am currently home with COVID, so I have a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> but before we dive deep into what the voter fraud is, let's start at the beginning. When I went out to vote on Tuesday, my hope and goal was to support, of course, the uh, now uh, president-elect of the United States, Joe Biden. But when I went to my uh, uh, West uh, East Barrington voting area, I had a little bit of cough. I, had, I was coughing all over the place, and everyone said to me, <laughs> Rachel, get inside. Oh, put your mask back on. But I said no. My patriotic duty is to vote and to go in there and vote proudly. So I went inside and, of course, they didn't have me in the voter rolls. I had to show my identification. And when I showed it, they handed me a, a, they handed me a ballot. I went to fill it out. And every time I put my pen to that paper, it would slide over to Donald Trump. I couldn't mark the Biden bubble to save my life. Did I yell, this is MAGA country? (laughs) I'm sorry, but I'm not controlled by Russian assets. The first thing we need to do is take a look at exactly where did the vote begin. We have to go all the way back to 1902, when the Romanovs were still in charge of Russia, and they were predicted to control for the next hundred years. But as we know, a certain little revolution changed the course of history and would give rise to the communist movement that would take over Russia and bring us to this day where Vladimir Putin puppeteers Donald Trump with invisible strings across the United States. Does that explain it? That's not bad. I've heard you're at the top of the list for the day. Top of the list. Thank you. Goodbye. You're welcome. It's the first time that we just ended the call. <laughs> Trump National War Room. Hello, I like to report some voter fraud. What city are you calling from? I'm calling from Newark, Ohio. All right, currently we are unable to accept calls from swing states that are no longer in question. So I'm going to direct you to our website and we have a form on Excuse, there. Excuse uh, Wait a minute, hold on. I have more. Excuse me, that's just the first of many different voter frauds I, I, I wanted to currently, report. Currently, though, Currently, though, sir, we are receiving a number of phone calls, so we're going to be unable to handle your phone call at this time. We appreciate you reaching but out But if us. I Have write the day. letter, Thank should you. I write Dear Casey? Oh, I shouldn't have said Ohio. That was a bummer. We have to call right back. I'm calling again to check in on any new fraud that's been reported. It's Donald J. Trump. Well, I'd like to report the biggest fraud. The election is being you stolen from number, me. You called this number already? Yeah, I just called. That's what you're spending your time doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm having a great time. Look at what you're spending your time doing, propping up a lie. I feel bad for you, man. I feel bad for you. You're the loser who's sitting on a Trump fraud hotline. You sound like you're a grown man. I am a grown man. I'm the biggest boy you've ever seen, and I can dance to YMCA better than anybody, and my wife holds my hand if I pay her $50,000. It's pretty cool. I'm a total weirdo. No. You know who's a weirdo? I'll tell you who a weirdo. Excuse me. (laughs) Well, hello. I'd like to report some voter fraud. Can I ask what state and county you're calling from? Yes. I'm uh, in Marietta, Georgia. I live at okay. 1141 Highland Drive. 
Marietta, Georgia, 30062. Okay. And you're calling with a New York City area code? Yeah, well, that's where I used to live, but I but I reside in Marietta, Georgia now. I okay. have for quite a while. Okay, and could you go ahead and describe the instance of voter fraud that you believe you experienced? Well, of course. I woke up like I do every morning, and my wife, Nancy, made me a, two poached eggs, some fresh squeezed orange juice, left the paper out, and a cup of coffee. And I turned to her and said, Mother, as I call her, Mother, it's time for us to go vote and take this country back again. Even though we already took it, let's take it back even more. And she said, of course, Ron. So, after I took my pajamas off, took a shower, got into my suit, and then Mother pulled the car around, and we got in the car to go out and drive and vote. Are you with me are so you far? Reading, are you reading this from a script, or is it just going off the top of your head? No, you know what's amazing? I'm totally making this up off the top of my head. None that's of this is scripted. Impressive. That's pretty impressive. I kind of sounds like you prepared a little bit. No, not at all. I'm actually incredible. Wow. I'm I'm incredible talking off the top of my head. Some people used to call me the great communicator. Just improv. Yeah. And and everybody oh, loves oh, improv. Oh, I get it. You are you're pretending to be Ronald Reagan right now actually. What? That's I, a good one. I'm not pretending. I am Ronald Reagan. I got a direct. Sir, could you hold on one moment? Could sure. Just one minute. Hey, everyone. Ronald Reagan is on the phone right now. <laughs> Everyone's really excited here to talk to you, Mr. President. Pass, pass me around like a cheap whore. I'm going to put you on speakerphone right now. Well, okay. My fellow Americans, it's me, President Ronald Reagan. I wanted to call and tell you that you're doing an incredible job. We need to take this country back from the liberals and young people and pretty much every demographic that you guys need in order to survive as a party. We need to take it back from them and keep it squarely in the hands of people who are extended on their credit card debt and are over the age of 75. That's the way to retain power in the United States. Keep it white, keep it light, and keep it tight, folks. My wife Nancy says to me, Every morning when we wake up in our beautiful palatial five-bedroom apartment in a towering apartment building in the capital of hell, okay, pandemonium. Sorry, I I know, yes. I know you're on a roll here. Yes. I just, what do you do for a living? Well, if you want to know, put the pieces together. I do incredible voices. I improvise. And I have so a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> are you recording this to put online? Well, not only am I... Not only am, is that happening, it's being broadcast live. That's exciting. Yes, you're famous too. And here's... Well, yes? Well, if I'm being broadcast live, I'd like to say that we're receiving tons of legitimate complaints of voter fraud well, from Americans across this country. Okay. We have our legal team looking into every That's, single report of voter fraud. Well, and we're going to make sure that every single legal vote is counted. The yes. media does not declare the winner of this election. Yes. Well, no. We well, and we're going to make sure that every single voter has their say in this election. Well, no. I, you your I let have a you. Great day, sir. I let you have your time, and now you'll have mine. Oh my God! <laughs> we will be pranking the hotline all week. We will be pranking the hotline all week. Okay. Yes, this is the President of the United States calling. I'm sorry, what did you say? This is the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, calling. I'm checking in on the fraud hotline. Hello? Okay. So, how is everything going down there? Are we getting a lot of fraud? I'm reading right now a lot of the information that Rudy's provided me, including the obituaries of many people who voted many times in Pennsylvania. And I want to tell you, we really appreciate the work you're doing down there. Okay, thank you so much. Now, could you tell me a little bit of the fraud that's been reported? Ah! Uh. <laughs> Trump make America great again, committee. How can I help you? 
Committee. How can I help you? Hello, I'd like to report uh, some election fraud. Okay. Um, this is not where you do it. What? It, what um, what's this number? This is the Trump Make America Great Again Committee. So what do you guys do? We take donations for Trump. Okay. Well, all right. I mean, I have to tell somebody that... um, The number is 800. Hold on. Let me get a pen. Now, why is he still taking donations? I thought he lost. No, sir. He did not lose. What happened then? They're taking it to court. Well, I will tell you that there is some business happening in Florida, and it was not good. Okay, you know? well, the number is 852. Now, thank you so much. Now, first off... You're very welcome. Have a great day. Hey, no, hey, hold on just for a second. <laughs> uh, but that number, no one's picking up. So I think this is a misdirect. Schiller International University. Somebody will be right with you. Hello? Hi, is this the, the fraud Hello? hot? Hello, is this the fraud hotline? No, I'm, I'm sorry. You must have the wrong number. This is the, not the Trump fraud hotline? No, uh, it's not. My name's Trudy. This is just my personal cell phone. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Can you tell me where you got that number? Because well, you're like the third person that's called me. Well, this is why. So first off, I'm going to stop my comedy voice because I was pranking the Trump hotline. But um, they <laughs> gave me... <laughs> they gave me a two as the hotline when I called the... Wait, wait, wait. Let me write that down. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll g- let me give you the number. I'll give you the number two of the um, of the uh, uh, of the 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 person I called. So the I had called their um, hotline, which was eight six six. No, is that correct? Yes, eight six six two zero one. Seven six five two was the okay. was the was the number I called. Then they said to me, "Call eight five two. But my, now my chat, because I'm also live streaming this, I should tell you on my Twitch. Um, they uh, gave me an eight 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 number, which led to you. So they're probably handing out that they're probably passing out that number incorrectly. I'm having a good time because I didn't vote for him either. I surely didn't vote for him. So, like, people are sending me songs, although sometimes people are telling me to eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, reverse prank him. What you should do is suss out the people who are serious and then and then just, <laughs> and just mess with them. But I'm so glad you didn't vote for Donald Trump, right? <laughs> no, I did not. No. Sure. Well, that's... Like, a lot of students that I've got to teach. Oh, you're you're teaching? Well, not at the moment. At the moment, I'm sitting in a bar drinking a martini. But generally, yes. <laughs> well, well, so, so, I'll tell you who I am. So, you, have you seen that meme that went around the last couple of days of the Trump being dragged out of the nursery school? I have not, but I heard about it. Okay, well, that's me. Th- you have my phone number. You could just text it to me. I well, you know what? I will text it to you. You're one I'll of the give few. You my real phone number. Well, don't give it to. Uh, hold on, hold on, because I don't want you to hand it out over the over the broadcast. I'm not giving it to anybody else. I trust you. Okay, wait. Hold on, hold on. I'm on, I'm on a broadcast. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. You're on a broadcast. So hold on. Let me <laughs> give it the regular phone. Okay. So now tell me your phone number. Yeah, of course. <laughs> two nine four give me the last part yeah no I didn't wait your I'm name is Trudy sure. I'm, you know nobody but yes 
Trudy with an I. T R U D I. That's okay. great, S-L-E-R. Trudy. What do you What do you teach? S L E R. Uh, I teach sociology. I'm in higher education. Um, and where do you I live? Take care of a lot of students. I live in Florida. Whoa! Wow! God, that's tough. It yeah, I mean, is very tough right now. Very yeah, tough. I got to imagine. Well, I hope you're staying safe and enjoying that martini. Everyone loves a teacher who's <laughs> thrown a few back before they go into class. <laughs> no, mostly before they grade the test. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, yeah, I'll send that to you. And I did a TV show called The President Show um, that uh, was on Comedy Central where I, I played Donald Trump. All right. Well, so, if you ever go, to, well, we don't really have much going on here now. I mean, more than most places. But next time you're, are you in Florida? We're, we're no, no, I'm in New York. But I will send, uh, you know what? I'm going to text you the, the little clip. And then uh, okay. you get it back, and then I'll mail you a copy of my book as a gift for being awesome. such a good a good sport. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I hope you have an awesome day. Trudy, we love you, and 150 people love you, too, who are watching this. So <laughs> everyone loves you. They're so thrilled. By, they're thrilled. Oh, 150? Come on. I need more love than that. Oh, my. Hey, you know what, Trudy? These are some of my best numbers. Jesus. Well, call me anytime. You have my number. <laughs> All right, Judy. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Well, look at that, folks. Donald Trump is bringing America together. Bringing America together by giving the wrong number for his f- stupid fucking hotline. Now let's try it again. Trump National War Room. All of our agents are busy helping other callers. At the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, you may hang up or press the pound key for more options. Hi, I'm uh, I'm trying to reach Trudy. Uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm one of her students at Florida in Florida. uh, Trying to uh, figure out when the test is, and I know she's usually having martinis around this time. You know, it's one fifteen in the afternoon. So, uh, anyway, I don't know where she is. Uh, this was the number that was given to me to call Trudy. So, uh, you know, give me a ring. Give me a ring back, Jack. To listen to your message, press 1. To erase and re-record, press 2. To send, press 3. To send this message as urgent, press 4. Ooh. Please- Urgent message sent. I'm just going to send them all as urgent messages. <laughs> Trump war room. Uh, how you doing? I'd like to report a, a voter fraud in Georgia. <laughs> Trump war room. I'd like to report uh, some voter fraud in uh, Hampton, Georgia. Yeah, well, I um I live in Hampton. I went to uh, vote at my polling place, and uh, when I got my ballot, um, it had uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump listed. And um, when I tried to put my pen on the Donald Trump bubble, uh, it would slip over to the the Biden, and then I would try to press it again, and it would slip over. Was this like a digital pen? Uh, no, it was it was a paper ballot. Hmm. Gotcha. Well, sir, I don't think I'm gonna be able to help you very much today. Why? I'm. I mean, I'm. Oh. I'd like to report some voter fraud. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was. I, I mean, I was in Florida. And I ran, uh, I ran uh, uh, over down to the polling place, and uh, just uh, on Friday, and it was closed up. Okay. Um, did you vote, or what, what? What is the voter fraud that you would like to report? Well, I went over there on Friday. I, I read where the polling place was. 
I went in there and there was no one there. It was all shut down. I didn't have a chance to vote. They said the polling place would be open. I show up and it ended in there and it wasn't open. Okay, well, if you went this past Friday, um, the polling place, I mean, is closed because they're open on election day. Um, By early voting. I was going to early vote. So the Friday before the election? No, I wish I could have done that, but uh, I didn't get it together in time. So I want to bring my early vote this week. So so I brought it on brought it on Friday. But I voted early. I filled it out. <laughs> now, now I could have easily been a legitimate, a, a legitimate <laughs> voter there. Hi, Trump. Warren. I wonder. They're in Virginia, right? Yeah, I'd like to report some fraud. Okay, what state are you calling from? I'm calling from Georgia. Now, I'm not a resident. Okay, I, I, I was originally from Alabama. Uh, well, and I went ar- through Arkansas. Okay, and um, what, ca- what can I do for you? What happened? Well, so my wife, she lives up in New York, and I went down to vote, and I, I got a... Residents down there now at uh, 1953 Sand Creek Drive. It's in southwest Atlanta. Okay. Now, I'm a pretty important guy, okay? So, you know, uh-huh. when I go out to vote, it matters. People pay attention. Sure. So I went down there to vote, okay? And now my wife, uh-huh. let me tell you something. My wife doesn't agree with me. She doesn't vote the same way I do, Okay. She vote up in New York, and you can guess which way she's voting, okay? Not MAGA, not CAG like me, okay? So, okay, sir. I want to neutralize the vote, you know, because cause I figure uh-huh. my wife's out there. She's voting Joe Biden, so I thought I'll vote for Donald Trump, okay? Okay, sir. Now, I'm an important guy. I've spent time with the man. I know the man personally. I've done business with him. Okay, or I've been around him with business. He attended my daughter's wedding. Okay, so I show okay. up to the polling place. Okay, a lot of fanfare because everyone said we didn't know this guy lived here. Okay, local news covered it. It was very impressive. I go into the voting place, and I say, "Yes, it's me. I know you think it's. I, I know I'm as shocked as anybody." And they hand me my ballot. I fill it in. Okay. Now, if I, the only thing I wish I could have done was have voted against Hillary. Okay. As opposed to vote against Joe Biden. You know what I mean? Because I personally, you know, because she gets under my skin. And uh, in more way, you know, I mean, she really bothers me, you know. And and she won't leave me alone. She's going for walks in the woods all the time. She's bothered, you know. She's she's crowing on about I lost this, I won this, I got to get up early to go on Howard Stern. You need to drive me, all that kind of stuff. And I said, no way. I'm going to send her a message and Joe Biden a message that I I'm uh, I'm not letting them take my thunder, okay? Because I was the greatest president. I was the best president of these United States. Okay, sir, and can I ask you your name, please? Well, my name's William Jefferson Clinton, and I was the president. I was the president of the United States. Okay, sir. Have a good day. Bye bye. Well, no, don't leave. Don't hang up on me, honey. Ooh. <laughs> Hi, I'd like to purport, uh, report voter fraud, please. Absolutely. Could you please describe the incident? Yeah. So I got up this morning. Uh, I got on my skateboard. To go down to the vo- the polling place, and uh, you know, and uh, normally I take the I take the side road out of my cul de sac. I was I was I was running behind, so I hopped on. I grabbed the back of a truck to get a little speed, you know. And I had to stop by my buddy Doc's house to feed his dog. I turn on this amp; it blows me straight through a bunch of boxes. 
So I really hurt myself. I hit my head. Yeah, you got to be late to school at that point too, don't you? Oh, yeah. Only you had something to, uh, you know, kind of like get back to the point where you would have not been late. Man, I recommend maybe uh, maybe some Ford, maybe a Mandalorian. A Mandalorian? Wow, you really blew that one. It's a DeLorean. <laughs> it's not a Mandalorian, you idiot. <laughs> you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? A Mandalorian? These Trump people are such fucking idiots. The Washington establishment and the financial media corporations that fund. Hello? Hello? This is the president of the United States of America. Uh, hey, man, I work at Booz Allen Hamilton. You keep calling my right. private office number. Can you please stop? What? <laughs> <laughs> that's not his private office number because that's his Trump hotline. I'd like to report a, a voter fraud in, in, in Pennsylvania. Okay, sir. Can you tell me what happened? Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm a recent you know, transplant from New York, and um, yeah, I moved to the Philadelphia area, and you know, I wanted uh -huh. to, you know, I wanted to go you know, vote. Uh, and you know, that morning, uh, you know, of course, I had a bit of an you know, existential crisis. You know, I have a young girl staying with me, and she's, you know, not exactly. She's about eighteen, nineteen. You know, but she acts like a child, and. You know, so I had to take her with me to go vote, you know. Of course, you know, every vote is sacred. So, you know, I decided, well, I'll leave her at a coffee shop. You know, of course, you want to go to you know, an art bookstore. So, you know, I, say, I said, okay, go to the art bookstore and I'll go vote. So I went down to my polling place. It was a great day, you know. Really one of those boring, you know, days where the, it almost feels like there's a wet blanket, you know, over the sky. And... The difference, you know, Philadelphia is so drab, you know, compared to New York. It's it's a lot more, you know, it's sad working class, you know, gray. It doesn't have the dynamism and excitement, you know, that New York provides, you know, the, the Broadway shows and the, you know, kooky characters. Uh, yeah, I go in to vote, you know, and, and, you know, there's only two choices, you know. And, of course, you know, I could have hit myself in the head with a ball-peen hammer. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe got another prescription of Prozac, you know, how protracted this country is. You know, I, I only wished, you know, Hoppo Marx was on the ballot. You know, I could have voted for him. You know, one of the great classics, one of the great, great leaders, you know, like Roosevelt. You know, people of a time and an era when they knew how to lead and not just, you know, divide. So I guess the fraud was really on myself at the end of the day. You know, I, I left. I, I didn't even vote. You know, I guess in a way you could say, you know, we're all victims of, of voter fraud because, you know, we're all, you know. <laughs> Hi, I'm calling to check in on how the fraud's going. How the fraud's going? This is the line to report fraud. Oh, I know. And I'm hoping that you patriots are going to push me over the line. This is the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, calling. <laughs> Trump National War Room. I'd like to report some voter fraud. Yes, sir. What state are you calling from today? Well, I'm <clears throat> born in Yorba Linda, but I live in Pennsylvania now. Okay, and then what um, issue are you calling to report today, sir? Well, my issue goes back to 1960, when the Kennedy machine turned out thousands of dead votes in Chicago in order to deny me my rightful position as the President of the United States. Even after I had given my checker speech, reassuring the American people... Hi, I'd like to report some voter fraud in Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. Um, what did what exact incident did you witness that you'd like to report? You know, it was really, I have to say, I I, I was really skeptical about all of this, and I, will, I, I honestly did not think that it was possible for this to happen. So I want to say that up front. Um, mm -hmm. 
But I went to vote in Pittsburgh, and uh, it was where I live. And um, my polling place is, is relatively small. And um, so I went in, and there were a lot of people who were being really, um, you know, I wouldn't say aggressive, but definitely, like, intimidating me outside of the, the building. And um, so, you know, that's just voter intimidation. I know that's not fraud. But so I went in to, to I took my ballot and um, it was an e-machine. Um, and so I, I, mar I marked on the pen and every time I tried to mark Biden, it marked Trump. And I kept trying to remove it and, and take off the, you know, change the ballot. And it would not allow me to vote for Biden. It was crazy. So I finally clicked it and it just voted for Trump. And so I went, I, I put it through, the, you know, I submitted it. And then I went over to the poll, uh, you know, worker and I said, hey, I said, I want to vote for Biden. And the vote keeps switching to Trump. Um, so I just I, I don't know what to do. And I've tried contacting the uh, local election board. But of course. Hello. I guess they don't care about um I guess they don't care about that kind of voter fraud. Trump War Room, how can I help you? Yeah, I wanted to report voter fraud. Sure, what state are you calling from? Uh well I'm I live I'm from New York, but I, I live in Georgia now. I moved here because okay, I'm Okay, can you tell production. me what happened to you, sir? Yeah, I went to vote in my district and uh you know, I work in production, so uh, you know I I just you know I, I worked very crazy hours, so I, I didn't get into uh, vote until later in the evening. And um, the boat, the, the the sheet that I was using, I kept trying to fill it in for uh, Biden. And the the um, it was like greasy, like it wouldn't I don't know how to say it. The pen wouldn't mark it. And so I kept trying, kept trying. And I brought it to a poll worker and a poll worker was like, why don't you mark Trump? Which I think is crazy that someone would do that. And so then I said, well, where are the, you know, I want to talk to whoever the superior is, but I don't really understand how it works at a polling place. So um, anyway, my uh, ballot was not cast for Biden uh, and they would not give me a replacement. So I want to know what to do. Sir, I'm not really sure what to tell you. Um, I can go ahead and take down some of your information if you feel comfortable with that so we can make a file claim for you. Yeah, I would love, I would love that. So basically you wanted to vote for Biden, but you weren't able to. I wanted to vote for Joe Biden. I wasn't able to. And when I tried to mark the ballot, the ballot slipped, you know, it was, it was greasy and slippy. Like it would like, wouldn't take the pen. Okay. So I'm going to ask for your first name. My first name is uh, Sam. Last name? Griffel. G-R-I-F-F-E-L. Okay. okay, phone number, please. My phone number is 917-621-2242. Okay. Okay. This is my work. Okay. This is my work phone. Okay, and address, please. Uh, my address is 1953 Sand Creek okay. Drive. Sand, sorry, Sand Creek Drive. Okay. Southwest. Okay. Atlanta, Georgia. 30331. Okay. Alrighty. Sounds good, sir. And can you tell me what county you voted in? Oh, God. I've just moved here. Hold on. Let me. I have to. I have to look up the county in my in my area. Sorry. Okay. Okay. What do you think about all this fraud? Um, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of just you know taking calls and seeing what happens. You guys, uh, you guys making a uh, good buck over there though. Um, I can't really answer that, sir. I'm really just here to take phone calls, and I'm waiting on the county. Yeah, I, I, don't know, I feel you. Hold on. You gotta make money in this time, you know. 
Oh, come on. Fulton. Fulton. Sorry. Fulton County. I'm sorry about okay. that. I just, like I said, so I just you moved here. concerned you. that you tried to vote for Joe Biden. Yes. But you were forced to vote for Trump instead. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. We I'll, appreciate you calling us. I'll tell you, you're the only on the up and up person working in that call center. So God bless you. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much for calling. There you go. She did it. She took a complaint. <laughs> Our movement. Our movement. Hello? It's the president of the United. Don't hang up. I I let you report some voter fraud in Pennsylvania. Hello. Hello. Okay, let's have play hardball here, folks. First off, let me tell you, the voter fraud's crazy in Pennsylvania. It's bigger than it's ever been. I've been seeing it all over the place, district by district. It's absolutely wild. And I want to tell you about my experience. Okay. Well, this week isn't really about an experience. Um, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to tell you about an act. It's a crazy act, and it involves all the players in D.C. right now, the D.C. swamp. We know that, and we know that Donald Trump wants to clean it up, but can he do it? He's had four years. What has he done? But let's get to the real thing. Jonathan Capehart, you're here. You're my guest. Tell me what you think. What's going on? Oh, Jonathan's not available? All right, we'll continue on this call. First up, let me tell you. I look around Philadelphia, tons of turnout, almost 90% African-American turnout for Donald Trump. How are you guys going to deal with that? What are you going to put on the table? How are you going to win this election? It's already over. Joe Biden's declared. What are you going to do? Actually, Joe Biden isn't declared because of the Electoral College doesn't convene until December 13th or 14th. And so that's number one. Number two, real clear politics already pulled their projection for Joe Biden back. So he doesn't have the 270 electoral votes. So he's technically. Well, first up, let's say real clear politics. Excuse me. Oh, you're on hardball here. Let me tell you. First up, the real clear politics. Okay, Real Clear Politics is not a news organization. They're polling. They're polling. They're polling outfit. They're online polling outfit. We're right. talking mainstream right, news outlets declaring right. president-elect. The transition team. But they don't. They don't declare him president. They don't decide who the president is. The electoral. College. It's a fair point. Let me tell you, fair point. But moving on. Okay, we have senators now. Four senators, including okay, Collins, is has come out today saying that uh, that Joe Biden is he is the president. So what are we going to do now? No, he is the president. They're saying the he's president. the president-elect. He's, the, he's president. the president-elect. He's not, he's not the president-elect. No, he's not, not until the Electoral College convenes. Right, well, will you back down? If the Electoral College, if the, if the Electoral College, if the Electoral College does say, Joe Biden, this guy, he's the president-elect, what does John Trump do? Does he pack in his bags? Does he fight? Does he send the military into the streets? Hypothetical, sir. Well, this this whole right. conversation has been a hypothetical. What are you talking about? This is not hypothetical. It's factual. The Electoral College is not convened until December. Joe Biden is not the president of the United States. He's not the president-elect. The media does not determine who the president is. The Electoral College does. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, this is a legal challenge. This is going to take a little time, but we're looking very good in different places. Now, what about January 20th? January 20th. Joe Biden's standing there. Does Donald Trump show up? Does Donald Trump hold his hand? Do they walk like two little boys up to the podium so that Joe Biden can become president? Are they like two to- toddler friends? Or are they or are they not going to play with each other in the sandbox? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to answer your question, and then we're going to jump off because this is a voter fraud hotline. But on January 20th, Donald Trump will show up because he will be getting inaugurated as president again. He's That's right. Elected. That's so interesting. This is a voter. This is the voter. This is the voter fraud hotline. But you're, but you're also advocating for one, one candidate. If it's a voter fraud hotline, shouldn't you be taking all fraud? Why are you taking a position? Should you be taking a position? You are taking a position. You just took a position. You just said, excuse me. You just said that Donald Trump will be president. That's an advocacy. You're advocating. Excuse me. You're on hardball. You're advocating for Donald Trump. Yes, you are. You're on record, and you're being streamed live out across the country right. 
right now. Yeah, you're going to get fired, buddy, because you're not supposed to be doing that, pal. You're not supposed to be advocating for one candidate or the other. Listen, let me tell you something. I want to just get your analysis right now. Just tell me a little bit. Power switch in the Senate. Georgia's got two senatorial candidates coming in. The special election, January January 5th. What do you think of the prospects, Mitch McConnell, minority leader or majority leader of the Senate? I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals in the Senate because what well, only thing I'm talking about right now is how the president of the United States is. Um, you concede? Would you concede that Joe Biden could be the president? Would you concede? Look, would you concede that Joe Biden could be the president yeah. of the United States? Would you concede that? The only thing that I concede to is that in the United States we don't quit and we don't negotiate with terrorists and we don't cheat. That's the only thing that. I'm oh, so now you're labeling the opposition party as terrorists? Is that what you're saying? You're saying the Democrats are terrorists? This is the Trump voter fraud hotline says Democrats are terrorists. Is that what you're saying? No, nope, that's not what I said. You just said you don't negotiate with terrorists. Who would the terrorists be in that in that analogy? Who who exactly would the terrorists be? Who are they? Is Al Qaeda running? Is this Al Qaeda also running for president? Is ISIS running for president? As Americans, as Americans, those are things that we don't do. We don't quit at anything, whether it's an election or whether it's... What are you talking about? We quit after we nuked Japan twice. We quit. We could have launched a third one. We didn't. We quit. We quit Vietnam. What are you talking about? We quit Vietnam. We left Vietnam. We totally quit that. Yeah. What we quit? We quit when we. We all quit. What are you talking about? But I just told you two instances of quitting. There's two instances of quitting. Vietnam. We pull out off the Hanoi. Well, what do you think? We think we won Vietnam. You think the United States won Vietnam? Breaking news. Breaking news. Trump fraud hotline believes that 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 Vietnam was won by the Americans. This is a voter fraud hotline. We're not talking about Vietnam. We're talking about voter fraud. What is it that you'd like to report? I'd like to report on exactly why you think the Democrats are terrorists. What exactly are the the acts of the Democrats that have been terroristic? I never said the Democrats were terrorists. I said as Americans, we don't quit. We don't negotiate with terrorists. And Who are the terrorists? Who are the terrorists? Who are they? There's, there's nefarious folks all across the world, man. Well, why are we negotiating with them or not negotiating with them? What does this have to do with voter fraud? Osama bin, Osama bin Laden is a terrorist or was a terrorist. Well, I, I, do you believe Osama bin Laden's alive? Do you believe that SEAL Team 6 was killed by Joe Biden? Osama bin Laden's still alive. Do you believe it? I think that there was voter fraud in this election, and this is a number and on for people to call if they uh, experience Right, but do you, think, excuse, do you think that Joe Biden's being kept under a large Dixie cup under the ocean? Do you think that Joe, do you think that, that, oh, some, I think Joe Biden hid head out in his basement because he knew that the fix was in and that they were going to, you think he hid out in his basement. So you're, so you're an impartial, you're an impartial voter fraud line that, that says uh, political lines like that Joe Biden, like Joe Biden is hiding in his basement. That's what you are. You're a non, you're a nonpartisan voter fraud line that, that, that spews uh, Republican uh, talking points, right? No, no. You aren't? That's not true. What just happened isn't true. Breaking news. What just happened isn't true, folks. What just what just happened is not happening, folks. And now tell me the truth. So do you think that do you think that uh, uh, Bill Clinton and uh, Hillary Clinton drink the anodyne from children's uh, spines? Do you think that do you think Q WWGA? Well, where we go one, where we go all. Can you tell me and where we go and where we're going and where we go one all? Is it to the anodyne clinic to get some of that that sweet sweet uh, uh, spinal juice from the kids? I think where we're going is to make America great again. We're gonna make America. Great. But what do you think about that? Do you think that Q's onto something? Do you think Q's onto something? You think you think that that Donald Trump is just that this is just a uh, uh, part of the diversion? Do you think this is part of the diversion that Q, Q is going to reveal itself? You've been asking me a lot of questions. Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, listen, it's hardball. We can ask whatever we want. Okay, all right, great. So when all this gets corrected right. and it's exposed that, that there was a lot of voter fraud, a lot of irregularities, a lot of things happened that weren't supposed to happen. That's so right. They can fight a court order. Right? Yeah. When this gets flipped... And President Trump is, in fact, reelected to the courts. I'm wondering what you're going to do with that. How upset are you going to be? 
excuse me, how, how upset I'm going to be. So just, just, just to be clear, the question you're asking me is a taunting question about how disappointed I might be if Donald Trump becomes a president uh, after Joe Biden's president-elect is overturned no, no, by the no, courts. No, no. Is that what you asked no, 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 no. me? No. No. My, my question is, is when this is corrected. Right. And when it's corrected because it's wrong now, correct? And President Trump, and President Trump is re-elected. Right. On the 20th. I want to know how you're going to feel about it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you first off, I think for a voter fraud line, this is incredible. Uh, we're advocating for Donald Trump to be elected president. We think that, that there's a mistake right now uh, that Joe Biden is, is president elect. I'll tell you how I feel about it. I'm going to think that Donald Trump's going to have a lot of work to do. He's inaugurated president of the United States. There's going to be 75 million people very upset in the United States. I think there's going to be a lot of trouble, a lot of problems. But more importantly, what I'm curious about is that uh, what do you think is going to happen? Will Q reveal himself in the second turn? Will Q will Q finally show themselves? Because, you know, I mean, is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. waiting? When is Mike Pence going to leave and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. join the ticket and become the vice president of the United States? Your thoughts? Well, I don't engage in conspiracy theories. Um, and I think this interview is running a little bit over. We, we didn't have uh, this amount of time slated, so I'll just go ahead and end on this. Um, don't engage in conspiracy theories. There was a lot of fraud and irregularities and voter suppression that did occur in this election. And uh, we feel confident and have full faith and trust in the fidelity of our judicial system. The fidelity. It's going to play out the right way. And I think that this president is going to be reelected. This guy, this guy, the guy from the phone booth, the guy from the voter fraud line, clearly advocating for Donald Trump, clearly advocating that, that Joe Biden doesn't have a chance at hell making a statement, standing on it. He's getting the last word. He sees this as an interview. He doesn't see it as a prank phone call. It's just incredible, folks. This is an incredible conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on Hardball. And I, I want to give a shout-out to James Adomian, who does a much better Chris Matthews than I do. My first hang-up on them. I'd like to report um, voter fraud. Okay, ma'am, I'm going to have to ask you to wait. I'll oh. put you in a brief hold. Sure. Ma'am? What the fuck? Do you think they have my number on a call list now? Hi, Anthony? Yes. Hi, Anthony. What are you calling to report? Oh, well, this is my grandson's phone. Hello? Oh, okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. My grandson, I don't have a cell phone. Okay, Anthony. Um, what, would you, what are you calling in regards to? Oh, well, that's my grandson's name. My name is Antonia. Okay. What are you calling to report, ma'am? Well, I wanted to tell you I, I, lo I, I found a bunch of ballots in a dumpster. Okay, thank you, Anthony. I have your information, your phone number, and name, age. Um, I will file that into our report system. Thank you. Oh, so no, you have my now. name and age? Oh, no. <laughs> I love that they think that they're being intimidating. <laughs> your, let me tell you something. I have your number uh, in our data system, and uh, you're in real trouble. Trump National War Room. Hello. <laughs> you reached the Trump War Room. How can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to report. Uh, I'd like to report some voter fraud. Okay. Uh, where are you calling me from, my friend? Uh, I'm calling you from uh, outside of Philadelphia. Okay. And uh, what did you witness on Tuesday? So the other day, uh, I went up, I was uh, down at the, I was down by uh, where I get my smokes at 7-Eleven. I look in the dumpster in, uh, in the back. I see a big garbage bag hanging out of it. And I see there's a ton of votes in the back. Ton of votes. I, I brought them home. I have them right here. Okay. Uh, do you have like photographic evidence or anything like that? Yeah, I got photos. Of them. I can send them to you. I mail them. I'll mail them to you. I can mail them to you. They're, they're, it's outrageous. There's tons of votes for Trump here. You know? Okay. And I got to tell you, you know, I was on, you know, Daily Caller. They said they're throwing these things out in all the dumpsters all over the place, you know? 
And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, anyway, I, you know, I talked to my friend Vinny about it. I said, you know, we got to go find as many of these as we can and, uh, you know, bring them down or send them to you or whatever, you know, because we want to help. You know, where we go one, we go all, you know. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Y'all have a good one, okay? No, wait a minute. Why'd you laugh at that? Trump National How can I help you? Hello. I'd like to report some voter fraud. Oh, is this that um, prankster? Uh, I love your videos. <laughs> they have me pegged. Thank you for calling Donald J. Trump Election War Room. Please hold for the next available agent. Our movement is about... This is the prankster. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. I want to ask you an honest question. Hello? Trump fraud? Okay, okay. Honest question. I'm playing fair. I'm 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 not doing a prank. Okay? How many calls, honestly, do you guys get that are like actually people trying to report fraud? And how many calls do you get that are me just recording videos for Twitter? Like, in all honesty, are you are you guys just are you in? Let me, are you let me talk? Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm not. Okay. I'm not cutting you off. I'm honestly asking you. Okay, I've spoken to hundreds of people who have had their votes stolen from them. Um, they've had relatives who were walking into voting precincts and um, were told that they could not vote in on election day. They were required to fill out a provisional ballot. Well, yeah, but that um, happens. That happens to everybody. Counting. I mean, that happens in New York. Well, let me finish. Well, I know, right. but I'm just you saying that that's not crazy. Yeah, we are having a conversation. I'm just saying that's not crazy, provisional ballots. There you go. Come on. Trump war room. Okay, let's continue. So so you were saying that there's been provisional ballots. So what else? I'm sorry? Oh, I, I was talking to somebody there who, uh, you know, I've been pranking the hotline, but I decided I wanted to honestly ask you guys how how many calls are pranks or like people trying to gum up the lines and how many calls are real calls? Like what's your... what? You could you guys have changed the number so many times. Like it, I presume it's frustrating, even if you're you know paid, not paid, a supporter, not a supporter. It's got to be frustrating to work a phone line where people are pranking it all the time. So my question is: is what's the proportion do you feel of calls that are like you know prank calls versus actual people reporting what they believe is voter fraud? Well, I missed the first part of this combo because I guess you were on the phone with someone else. But yeah. to answer your question, from my standpoint, I've definitely taken majority of legitimate instances that people wanted to report. Um, does, does that suffice? Is there? Do you have any other questions for me while I have you? Yeah, Well, so I was going to say, what would you say is the majority of the type of, like, is it, I, the person I was speaking to said is uh, often people saying that maybe their relative was provided a provisional ballot or they weren't allowed to vote. Uh, you know, they were given provisional ballot as opposed to a normal ballot to vote that, you know, on election day. Um, or do you get reports of people throwing away, you know, finding votes in dumpsters? Like what's the, what's the most extreme report you've gotten? I mean, it's definitely been a lot of array of things, not just one thing. Right. Uh, but I have, I mean, do you feel better now that you've had your questions answered? Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I love that they're so mad, but they talk to me. <laughs> Trump war room. Hi, I'm calling back again. You know, I'm being very respectful to the Trump war room. I've been calling as some of my best impressions from Donald Trump to, to, uh, to Patrick Stewart, to William Shatner, to Woody Allen. I've given you guys some of my best work. And now I'm just calling legitimately. Okay. And you want to hear my Trump? My Trump's pretty good. You want to hear it? Just really quick. Sure. Were you the one who called? Were you the one who called and um, did the Ronald Reagan? Yes. Election? Is that you? Oh, my gosh. No, I. So I'm not the same person you talked okay. to originally. Yeah. I was in the room, though, and I heard it. Well, thank you. You know, 
I, I think my Reagan is actually really good. And, you know, nobody really cares about Reagan anymore, but it's a good impression. But, you know, I'm known for my Don. I'm known for Trump. That's like sort of what my bread and butter Lord. is. Well, you know that meme, okay. you know, that meme going around of Trump being um, dragged out of the, the preschool, the, the video. Um, I'm not aware of that. Or the okay. or the one where he's on the desk being rolled down the hallway on, on, on Facebook. You, If you look it up, you'll see you'll see it. This is my Donald Trump. I'm calling to check in and see exactly how many voter frauds we've had today. Pretty good, right? Uh huh. Pretty good. Pretty good. There we go. Pretty good. So here's my yeah. my question on a on a scale of one to ten. How many people are entertained by my prank phone calls, and how many people wish um, I would stop calling? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I would have to ask. Let me let me take a poll real quick. Yeah, I'll take a poll. Office. Okay, hold on. Even though we know polls aren't accurate. Are you there? I'm here, I'm here. Okay, so I just took the poll, and I think the consensus is that we have definitely gotten better um, people calling with much stronger impressions, so I would say that you should work on it. What? um, And then call back in a little bit. And you, we can hear it again. How dare you? I can't believe this group of people. I'm giving you my best work. I know. I just think, you know, you should practice a little more. Practice? And, um, you can call back. I, I had my yeah. own television show on Comedy Central. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, practice makes perfect. Well, so here's, okay, so here's my other question then. Real quick, before before we go. So, mm-hmm. I'm just curious. Don't you think that a lot of the people saying like my provisional ballot wasn't counted and everything. And by the way, this happened for Democrats, like for Democrats for years, we Mm -hmm. hated provisional ballots, too. So there's a place where we can all agree that provisional ballots are annoying, right? Because they make it feel like your vote wasn't counted. Right. So is that more of a reflection of a problem with the system with like voting in general less than it is actually voter fraud? Because it's not fraud to provide a provisional ballot. I'm not sure exactly. I'm not the expert on that. Um, you would probably have to ask another one of my colleagues. Um, well, no, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure just talk to them in a little bit. Well, no, no, but I'm saying, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not, I'm really not trying to, I'm not trying to s- s- do anything right now. I swear to you. I'm, I'm really saying like, doesn't it seem like a lot of this is a reflection of more how we need to give people more access to vote make a holiday for voting, like make it so that everyone can vote and it's easy, clear and clean, right? Not trying to like game the vote. Uh, And let's put it this way. That can happen both ways, right? You could argue that either candidate, either party, whichever one is in charge of more states can work to game the vote, right? So doesn't it make more sense instead of maybe doing this hotline for particularly Trump voter fraud, which you're never going to overcome the the overwhelming number of, of votes at this point. So isn't it more makes sense to put your money and efforts into figuring out how to just make voting accessible for everybody and then let the chips stay, you know, go with, fall where they may like, you know, if, if, if that means that a majority of people end up voting for Democrats or a third party, like all sorts of possibilities get opened up, right. As opposed to continuing to play, this gamesmanship of hungry, hungry hippo over votes. Well, that is quite an outlook, and I don't know if I'm the right person to give that idea to you, but I say you pass it around your local government. Maybe they, you could start there. Well, no, put, put me back on speaker, and I'll do it as Reagan. I'll deliver it to everybody as Reagan, and then they'll believe it because Ronald Reagan said it. see what everyone's doing here okay yeah just see if everyone has a little time (laughs) i love this voter hotline (laughs) i mean i mean uh, what am i going to do when there isn't a voter hotline Oh, they hung up on me. I think that's it, everybody. That was pretty good.